So now we start. So uh, the first question is, describe one of the most, I'm sorry, describe one of the more interesting class assignments or projects or units that involve technology. <laughs> Shall I read the question again? Go ahead. Okay, so please describe one of the more interesting class assignments, projects, units with involved technology. So um, I'm a science teacher um, at um, Kings Canyon Middle School. Um, but we were in a collaboration uh, with USDA. Uh, they provided us a corn earworm uh, pest. Um, and the students designed a project-based uh, experiment based on it. So it was an opportunity for our students to learn about scientific method. So what we did was we created, um, I guess, a presentation for them, a template presentation, and they were able to use it to articulate parts of the scientific method. They were able to generate questions. Um, they developed profiles for each of the student members describing what their roles and responsibilities were, uh, ranging from being a biologist to a project manager to a technician. Uh, they articulate hypothesis. They used um, the um, growth of the worm. They collected it into data graphs and they presented it. They also collected um, not only quantitative data, but qualitative data. So they used the camera on the tablet to take pictures of the worm every couple of days so that they were able to chart the growth of it. And then they did an analysis and a conclusion. So through that presentation, I was able to give them feedback and then they were also able to use it to present it to the wider audience. So that was that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Anyone want to share? <coughs> yeah. Um, so I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hi. Uh, yeah, so I teach uh, physics, and in one of my classes we did um, a unit on um, essentially analyzing motion. We did, um, in, in real space, designing their own vehicles, so they had to build things out of cardboard, and mm. so they got to use the technology uh, to do research. They documented your pro their projects, like you said, they take pictures of different steps along the way, what were the materials, who was what role, mm -hmm. uh, while continuously building a, um, a collaborative PowerPoint and working together on this, and then they had to test their uh, vehicle up a ramp and get it up there while using the equipment to time the speed of the car, or calculate the speed of the car using the time and measuring distance. Um, calculating other aspects of kinetic and potential energy, and then they ended up having to present their entire experience to the class as a, like a summative assessment. So. Who's next? Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'll take it. Uh, I <laughs> um, actually have two. We started out with a Native American PowerPoint researching online, and they, there was a list of um, requirements that they had to have. So they ended up with 12 slides. And so that was their first experience as far as making a PowerPoint. They had made sways and uh, used technology another way, but the PowerPoint was um, with a Native American. Um, so because they had that experience and then presented, um, just last week they uh, had slides made, a template made up for a math pro problem. Mm -hmm. And each group had to um, solve a um, word problem and explain how they came about it and uh, type it all in and solve it. They took pictures of how they solved it and they, um, for the early finishers, they created a word problem for uh, a summative test for the end of um, that unit. Cool. Uh, and they presented it. Students um, also embedded video and um, to add to the PowerPoint, which they had not done in the mission. So they're they're moving along in the presentation, uh, learning the PowerPoint presentation and what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they presented and critiqued everyone's and mm -hmm. um, was a good experience. Cool. I'm so glad this works so well so far. Thank you no, guys. That's good. Um, so I have a lot to share, but the, probably the most engaging lab I did was EKG. So I used EKG. Uh, yeah, electrocardiogram. So it's part of the blood system. We track how their heart actually beats, and parts of the heart have electrical signals. And so what they do is they get hooked up to a sensor. The near has those sensors. 
and we plug them into the laptops. And so they have their own EKG, and then they get to learn about their own heartbeat. So they're looking, they draw part of the heart, this is where my heart beat is, it beats here, and then the signal transduces here, and it's really cool. And so I print it out for them, because they do it on their laptops, they send it to me, mm -hmm. and then in their notebooks, they're drawing on it while they learn about how the heart signal passes through. And it's really cool. That was probably uh -huh. the best thing this year. Sounds good. Um, okay, so yeah, we've done a lot of things too. Um, I guess the one that comes to mind would be we tried to use, um, we were learning about graphing, and, uh, and so we looked at Google Maps and we specifically looked at our school. And I got them to kind of, I was trying to get them to think about scale and like how maps work and like how mm -hmm. we can move in and out and how you know, how we can use maps to get us around the world, right? As well as incorporating math and so they think, well, the part of the standard, part of the standard theorem meaning was um, finding one point to another point um, on, a on, a, on a coordinate grid. And so what I did was have them transfer like the information that they would get from like a Google image of our school and they transferred that to graph paper and kind of made like an art project mm -hmm. and then kind of printed or copied that or took a picture of that and put that on a separate document and then kind of wrote about wrote a story mm -hmm. kind of explaining like where they went so like some kids were like oh I started here at my house and then I went you know to five four to you know my friend's house and that was how many steps or whatever how many feet or they kind of related it back to whatever they were their scale was and so then you had kind of an art piece on the wall too which is kind of cool because then they, they had their own little picture of what their Google map would be or whatever in their head and kind of just but being able to see that on the computer, they're like, oh, trying to be very, you know, careful about, you know, oh, well, that street goes this way. It's just kind of like how mm -hmm. they even start talking about intersections and how they work and like, you know, well, if I stop here, and oh, no wonder, I should probably go this way tomorrow. Like, they even like walking home, they found like a different way to walk homes because they were able to see kind of that map. So that was kind of a layer of just like coordinates that I never thought they'd get to with that. That's cool. So I heard you mentioned different <coughs> groups. Can you kind of explain how the various groups of students respond to the assignment or, you know, how, how different response that each group has? Um, is there anything? So, yeah. So in terms of the groups, I mean, we're working with such a diverse range of users. So you have some people who never don't have access to internet at home or computer. Mm -hmm. So teaching them how to launch programs was a big step. But then you have another range where some kids have been exposed to computer work and um, they know how to open programs and they know how to change font color. So mm -hmm. um, there's such a range. So, um, but the great thing about technology is that you can differentiate. So you go uh -huh. from like, you know, so what is your main priority? It's like completing the task, well, you know, the, maybe the writing task. But then you allow those who are excelled in the technology skills, they can then change the color, manipulate the photos. Uh, so you, 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 you try to tie it all together. So, mm -hmm. but you have that aspect, so. Wow, great. Actually, you mostly answer the next question, like okay. how the student excel using the technology for the assignment. So if anyone wants to share on that regard, uh, please do. Yeah, I'm gonna add just how much technology supports the individual student. Yeah. Um, I run Nearpods that are self-paced, and so we'll have these labs that are difficult, and the students who are ready can accelerate through it, mm -hmm. while I support other students at the beginning. So some people are analyzing data, while others I'm helping form a hypothesis, but mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool just having a self-paced learning environment. It's pretty That's cool. cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, for me, in terms of students that are a little less technologically advanced and some that are a little more, you physically can arrange the room and start pairing some people up. And, and I was worried at first when I was using these tablets very frequently that they were going to be very uh, single focus on their screen. And because this is what I see every day with kids walking around on their cell phones, just yeah. looking at the screen, not even looking up. But you start to see kids like saying, how did you do that? And they look at each other's screen yeah. and they say, hey, let me show you. Or they look around and they move around the room and they start to ask questions of each other. How did you do this? And this is like very exciting as a teacher that they're actually looking for answers and they're not calling on me necessarily to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to show them my ignorance of technology. But uh, generally, <laughs> yeah, generally they learn so well from each other. It's really great uh, for them to overcome it like as a, essentially yeah. working as a group. Yeah. Kind of just adding on to that, the same idea, just that students are able to really 
guide their own learning. Like I can plan the lesson now and it's nice because I come to work and they, you know, they go and they talk and they are either like, you know, if they're correcting each other's papers, now it's like super quiet because now we're trying to see if you were on the other side of the world and you were trying to edit this essay for this person, how would you do that? Well, you're on OneDrive and you're at, you know, you're able to access the file, you're able to work together, you're able to chat. So we're gonna try for like half an hour to not say a word and just talk to each other and edit our papers just through that one little feature of like Microsoft, you know, Word. Uh -huh. And yeah, just chatting with each other, you need to fix this paragraph, oh, okay. Or even, even when they weren't like, uh, it's like one person was still writing, like differentiating, right? So if one person's still writing and another person's done, well, they're obviously gonna get their paper edited by more people, but also they're gonna go help that other student who's struggling on, you know, indenting and pushing tab. Well, you know, it's like very simple yeah. and it's nice to like see them kind of self-guide themselves in that way because I kind of push them to do that. I'm like, I don't always have all the answers and I'm very new to this technology too and I wanna mm -hmm. learn with you and you know, even today we tried out the form and try to you know, use that as an assessment way and that was kind of fun for them. And, and back to that original question, that engagement is up because they want to know more and they don't even realize that they're still doing the same assignment, mm -hmm. you know, even sometimes. They just have to substitute because the rest of my grade level is like, we're going to take this wondrous assessment. I'm like, okay, well that's just substitution, but I can do that. And they are still more engaged than anybody else because they're on that topic. It's awesome that you're so uh, clearly training and so encouraging of peer learning during the group. And well, I think it was just so frustrating at the yeah. beginning because just logging them in and teaching them how to log in and go to like Microsoft Classroom. Their password. Mm -hmm. Remember their password. Like, um, uh, just even uh, over getting to getting to the, to the search, referencing the search bar where like Edge has them together and then like Google Chrome has them separately and like, no, 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 you're typing that in the wrong spot. Like that took 15 minutes. So before you know it, like I'm frustrated and I'm yeah. tired <laughs> and I'm like, I, there, there has to be something else. And then another kid just like, well, I can teach him. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, go ahead and teach him that. <laughs> and you're teaching this person. And can I teach him yeah. how to do this? And can I teach you how to do this? And like, don't you just click this one box that would make it easier? Sure. Wow. Awesome, and I like that they, that happens because mm -hmm. that's how you're naturally going to remember everything too. And how was again? What's your grade level? Uh, sixth grade. Sixth, sixth grade. grade. Wow. So as a fourth grade teacher, um, and I wish that we had some of the you know first and second grade teachers in here because we do yeah. have those in the PLI. Oh yeah. Um, but as a fourth grade teacher, what I saw really empowering is that you have the student that um, maybe is really struggling academically, but when it comes to the computer, mm -hmm. they're not. And so now they're the helper. It's like they have figured out something and now they are important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they can go to that other student and, oh, I know how to do that. And it's like, oh, okay, great, right. you mm -hmm. go. Right. And, and so all the way around, it's, it's really boosted everybody's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, along with the engagement, my um, supervisor just happened to be in a couple of weeks ago and she was like, I went around to every group. All 28 of your students were engaged, every one of them. And then she started right. naming names, even da da da, even da da da, right. even da da da. Right. And um, I think that's the power mm -hmm. yeah. of this collaboration. Um, we've had to learn, you know, what can we say as we're sharing sure. and helping each other. There's just been a lot of other learning going on besides whatever the subject area that we're mm -hmm. discussing. Because you don't make comments when you're collaborating and you know that person is over there and you're here and you're talking because everybody else is seeing the same thing you're writing to that other person. So all of that um, etiquette that, that they need to use. Mm -hmm. um, excited about um, collaborating with other grades at other schools. Mm -hmm. I think that's the next step that we need to take that we're no longer just in our classroom but that we're with other fourth grade students at another school, mm -hmm. they're seeing what we're doing. Talking and, and they're talking. Or something. You know, yeah. Yeah, then, then guess what? They are going to be proud. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, so it's like we're the foundation mm -hmm. to move them on to the next grade, the next PLI teacher, the next, you know. The next While grade. it is quiet, so that level of engagement, like you say, is there. So it's like, it's kind of nice to see that. That can that those two things can work together. Mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. you can have you can have a productive classroom where kids are learning at different paces at different levels. Maybe this group is working on one thing, this group is over here working on another. But that 
everybody is working on something and getting better somehow. Yeah, that's Mark. cool. Yeah, can I add something real quick? Sure. So besides the collaboration between the students, I've had to kind of change how I instruct as well. So I've been giving a lot of digital feedback on the files. Uh -huh. So that has been very empowering too because I mean, although I have to do it in the middle of the night because I want to mm -hmm. give immediate feedback, sure. mm -hmm. but then by the next day during the period, I can target those who really do need verbal right. feedback. So that's mm -hmm. been very powerful. So by commenting, hey, you need to fix this paragraph, da, 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 yeah. I can automatically, they can just walk in, all 37, 38 of them can immediately get on task and they can oh, revise their cool. document right away as opposed to rewriting the whole document. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, she so picked up on the next question. So okay. I know that you guys kind of, um, the answer has been embedded, but let's just bring it together. So how has your teaching been transformed through PLI? Who wants to start? I'll start. Yeah. Okay. Yay. So I kind of was sharing with other teachers on uh -huh. campus that don't have it and <laughs> it's just really exciting because you're giving students choice and voice and they're taking ownership over their learning yeah. and you're just supporting them along the way. Mm -hmm. So I think just taking that facilitator role has impacted me as a teacher because uh -huh. I think differently. Like not how am I going to teach the class, it's like how am I going to teach this group or students. Yeah. And if I'm out of town, like I have a day where I have a sub, I can pre-record something. You're fully there still. I'm still there. Yeah. And my yeah. kids are still yeah. engaged. Yeah. And yeah. I've had my instructional coach go through and my class is literally looking through my video yeah. trying to find out. Yeah. So, so you use flip, flip classroom. I'll flip the classroom yeah. and I was in Disneyland. I took a vacation day mm -hmm. and we were doing data analysis on ecology. And so there's lots of problems and I made a 12 minute video and they would work through the problems they could do. That's what she said. They'd do the ones they could. If they had problems, they'd go through. And I'm look on my tablet. I'm annotating. Oh. Cool. So they're they're seeing me talk. They're listening, and they're seeing me work through the problem, processing it. And they're working through the problems they can do. But they're the struggles. They have my support, even though I'm not mm -hmm. really there. Awesome. That's so, so cool. Pretty cool. We like to look at your videos. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, for me, I think it's uh, it's taken me down a, a peg in a, a good way. Um, I, I'm teaching not from necessarily like a point of absolute knowledge and authority on the subject matter because the technology is so new to me that I, I can't pretend. Mm -hmm. And so I'm showing them what a learner looks like. I'm showing them what happens when you make mistakes and how you problem solve. And, and I'm modeling a lot more than I ever did and it's pretty good for the students to see an adult admit that they messed up or admit they don't know or that they have to ask for help or that they ask a student for help and like this is it's definitely changed my also my connection to kids because I think they see me more as like a as like a, a real person <laughs> I, I don't know if that's and I, I mean I would I think I'm learning too I'm going to continue to even like pretend to make mistakes. Like if I make the mistake in first oh. period, <laughs> I make it again in fifth. <laughs> yeah. And I show them again because I'm like, yeah, that was effective. Like yeah. it was accidental, but yeah. if I'm going to do and this. You think you boost their self-esteem by making more mistakes. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm helping them yeah. get more self-esteem. It's not, yeah, it's yeah. not about me at all. Yeah. So I mean, that's definitely changed my presence in the room uh, yeah. for sure. Well, it's a struggle. Well, yeah. And uh, what was your original question? Because I thought of something you said. We, um, yeah, how is your teaching transform? And you, yeah, in one of our last meetings, you had mentioned that you have not used paper for how long? Yeah, this semester I haven't used any paper yet. Wow. Oh. Okay. So to me, that is really. <laughs> I want to talk about Same that. Same dreams. Uh, I want to talk go, about that too. Okay. They're asking. Go for it. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't. Uh, how is my, my, my teaching has changed, um, well, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like with the rest of you as far as making mistakes um, and not knowing, like, oh, I, I can't find that. How did I get there? And they're like, oh, Mrs. E, just da-da-da. And I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, because they, they're investigating now, and that, that was the probably the best thing that has happened to see that they're going, well, how do I fix this? How do I get to that site? What's the easiest way? Um, they're typing. They picked, um, they asked to type for six minutes every day because they know that they need to learn to type correctly. 
So that was a request that I had to fulfill for them. Um, so then they found the site that they liked the best, and mm -hmm. then they all do it. And then about um, do they all do different sites? Or they all no, do they all use the same type right. site, and they picked because they first went on. They they Googled and they yeah. searched and they first and so they were, and then they amongst themselves discussed which one they liked the best, and it happens to be typingclub.com. Mm -hmm. And um, but then recently they said, okay, we we want to take a time test. So and so took a time test. I said, find a site. So it's empowering them to um, have the, the voice and their choice. Mm -hmm. And then as a class, they, and it's really, I, I think my class is always bonded, but this class is really bonded, um, even more so because of so much voice oh, yeah. and choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and then deciding as a group, this is what we, we want to use, this is the most, you know, like the six minutes, it's like, this is the, we have to have it, because we're not getting better. You know, it's too hard when we go to type a paper. So then I had to adjust my day mm -hmm. to, okay, when are we going to do that? Okay, all right, I'll set the timer. This is what's going to happen. Okay, and even our agreement about our etiquette, you know, computer etiquette, um, how long is it going to take me? Well, it's going to take me nine seconds when I, when I ring my bell to shut the lid. Mm -hmm. So all of those agreements, they came to as a class. And so they function as a class um, more so because Why of that. Do you want to say something? Yeah, so we and I do use interactive notebooks, and we used to glue in <laughs> so much stuff. Cool. And now I just say it's less glue, more do. Mm -hmm. Like we have all the information <laughs> on the tablets, and they're transforming their learning by diagramming, color coding. They're actually their their textbook is their notebook. So I I wish I would have brought one, but mm. um, so the PLIs provided me resources for them to learn through. And then their learning transforms on this, I would say, beautiful, it's like a work mm -hmm. of art. It's cool. So, cool. like, taking the EKG, putting it in the notebook, and then transforming what they research on that is very personal to them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's transforming the way they learn. Versus here's a worksheet about yeah. EKG. Right. Mm -hmm. So, using the guiding yeah. questions and stuff. I mean, I, I think it's the same what you're saying. I mean, it, it, it works. The PLI initiative with the computers, it works perfectly with that shift in pedagogy where the students, you know, they're taking ownership of their work and student centered work. So sometimes I have to be careful because I'm not, I don't want to use the computer just as a mere replacement of a typewriter, right? Yeah. And if the students don't have ownership of the work, then it hasn't been transformative. So being able to navigate that, create a project where the students do, are articulating their writing or articulating the actual product, I think that's more empowering. But I'm still going to be critical on the technology because mm -hmm. you want to see, like, I know my weakness and my gaps of helping them articulate their kind of new digital identity, their digital world. So I haven't figured that out yet. Like, how do they actually distinguish quality information? How do they cite their research? Yeah. So all that stuff, I haven't figured out how to help them do it in a safe way. Right now, I think that you know we're still very protective of letting them use their cell phone, smartphone. But we know that until they can take ownership and develop a digital identity, a global identity through their work, I don't think we're fu I'm fully there yet because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to approach it. I don't know how, like, I haven't taken a step where they are commenting on each work yet because mm -hmm. I'm, there's still the fear of bullying or cyberbullying and right. kind of inappropriate comments, so I haven't developed those muscles. And I almost yeah. think it's like, for, for me, like, I even thought about that so, so much more because I was just like, I'm in sixth grade, they're going to mm -hmm. be going to seventh grade, they're going to be these little teenagers soon, like, they need to not be mean to each other on Instagram or yeah. Facebook or whatever, and it needs to start here, like, in this classroom, in this professional setting where we're coming together and creating, you know, works of art, as you say, like, we're yeah. really, really digging deep, and that's, that's really cool to watch. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what you want to create, right? Brian mentioned, like, I don't know if he coined the phrase or whatever, he keeps saying it, but digital empathy, and I always remember to mm -hmm. say that in my classroom, like, are you being empathetic on the computer as well? Wow, Maybe that's you amazing. Playground. You guys are just strong advocates. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> insightful. <laughs> okay, let me ask you guys, um, so uh, how do you, like, how do you collaborate or share, you know, with your colleagues on campus or yeah. across Fresno uh, Unified? I don't want to take first. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a website <laughs> and my admins starting to let me advocate for technology. Oh, okay. And so I just had a Nearpod on student ownership and I had student samples and just 
and discussing that with some other teachers has opened up some good conversations for what good teaching is and kind of the shifts on and what's happening in teaching because I'm getting buy-in by older teachers who yeah. are taught differently oh, and they're like yeah. whoa how did you get this student to do this work well I gave them choice and voice <laughs> and I guided them in a direction here's our objective they can get there I don't have to tell them this is the steps you do in order uh -huh. here's the guiding questions or here's the rubric and you're gonna create something you're gonna research you're gonna make know, something right? that yeah. accomplishes that mm -hmm. and so all students want as teenagers I feel like in high school they are struggling <laughs> with this is how you write your notes this is how you do this and it's but different just, in every class and it's different in every class <laughs> expectation so I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just letting them have a chance to express themselves has been pretty powerful in that way and so I, I share on my website it's mostly student work samples um, with and it's on the OneDrive so it's log login it's all in like collaborative login yeah. they have to log in with their Fresno Unified accounts uh-huh so and you invite some guests <laughs> just for, yeah just yeah, for Fresno Unified my mm -hmm. site has a website that I upload the SharePoint link yeah and then you're you have to log in to get access to it oh, that's so cool so it's yeah it's pretty cool um, yeah so for my collaboration I think the most effective collaboration has been the PLI trainings that mm -hmm. we've gotten to do where they bring everybody that's involved in this big project together and yeah. identify what are the problems and let's get in groups and start to solve these things and create presentations together and I mean that has been really um, like synergistic I think for me in terms of of getting somewhere with the problems I, I do work with this, the teachers at my school but since we're all kind of in different fields of study and we can share ideas but not lessons if that makes sense so um, I mean we, we, we end up trying to kind of complaining a lot I think <laughs> which is like this is the opposite of your question but like this is like a negative part of collaboration <laughs> that I had this question. problem like <laughs> yeah yesterday it's like oh there's no internet like what do you do without internet <laughs> 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 oh, yeah I felt like my teenagers and the wife was like, yeah because I just but, posted this test too and it was just like oh, well the internet yeah here's your paper <laughs> but, uh, but yeah you know, I mean, when we're going back to basics it's fine no problem we can yeah. still do it you can still be it can still excel at it but it wasn't as fun sure. so yeah I mean I think I think in terms of me like reaching out and sharing I'm starting to get a little more bold like you know I'm more com as I get more comfortable with it but I think I'm doing more of kind of taking ideas from other people up a uh, teaching channel I check in on and, and people are posting on this uh, different ideas and um, yeah, and I'll send emails of, well, how would you do that? <laughs> and, uh, Doesn't it make it you feel so and, bad because you want yeah. them to even have more to do, like, on yeah. tech? And I'm just like, I just want to know more so that I can get them, you know, to keep, get them yeah. to keep talking, you yeah. know, yeah. and experiencing cool. and learning more. So, was your question how are we collaborating? Yes, on campus. Or on campus. The campus. Uh, okay, so, Unified. um, you were doing research. So because you're doing research, I'm going to share that um, there was a lot of teachers that wanted to be in the PLI. Mm -hmm. And not everybody, because of the numbers, mm -hmm. um, so we had six teachers at my site that wanted to be a PLI. Fabulous teachers. Um, and only two of us were picked. That has caused hard feelings. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wanted to be in this. So when I share something, it's like, well, yeah, but you got to do this. You got to you got <laughs> oh, the same thing. thing. Okay. I've heard the same thing. Okay. Yeah, because that, well, because we do co you know common assessments, and then if I like one time I we did a common assessment, and I just substituted their typing on the computer, right? Because they're gonna have to type on us back, so right. it's like they have the tablets, and they're like, oh, I didn't realize you were gonna type them. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know I have these tablets you know I'm going to use them you know do you I have feel like that will last though the hard feelings like yes. this will be around yes. next year and this I is why I think it will last because I'm a lead teacher in, in our school site um, the budget we had to budget this year for, for new PLI teachers it has to be in the budget okay because the money isn't there for the district and so as I went around all the lead teachers not one sitting there I said are we not budgeting for any more PLI teachers? Nobody wants to do it. Mm. Well, it was forty thousand dollars a month week for our school per teacher. It was a fourteen so per teacher. Fourteen thousand. So yours forty. No, it's Maybe 14. it's different. So, so <laughs> all, you know, I don't know what I thought. I was like, <laughs> yeah. what is going on with these computers? And but sitting there were three of the teachers that 
I had applied last year. So it was like, no, nope, not going to do it. And so I'm like, and my heart just broke because it's like, why? You know, well, it's because our school really can't, you know, need, we need to move the money into another area. But to me, it's like, that was a key. So they are, for whatever reason, not buying into it in the future. And it really did break my heart because I felt, you know, you, you were so gung ho last year. And um, you would have been fabulous. They were all, would have been fabulous PLR teachers. Um, so, so I, I, I get, you know, I, I sense that. It's like, you know, I want to share and it's like, oh yeah, well, you got the computers. Yeah. And then my partner who we teamed up with is a second grader. So we don't get to collaborate. We right. don't have the same lunch. Yeah. We don't have, nothing is the same. So um, I'm doing something totally different. So it's like even though we were able to join up, that's still separate grade levels, it hasn't benefited us. She feels like an island, I'm an island. Mm -hmm. um, even planning, like you said, it's so hard to, to plan. Um, you know, you guys are, are doing a bigger project more so, right? Okay, we're not. So mm -hmm. it's like planning is, is a challenge. So collaboration has really happened with other PLI teachers at mm -hmm. other school sites, a mm -hmm. lot more. I see, well, what a story. Maybe we would like to really follow up on this and hear more about you know what you just shared, just uh, more details. Um, so the next question is, we, we talk about a lot of the technology use, how it promoted learning. Can you share like some experience in which you know technology might distract learning? <laughs> the <Google way. laughs> There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's very easy to have many uh, pages open on, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it yeah, kids are on uh, yeah, music station or YouTube, and, yeah. and this is a constant magnet for them because this is what they do in their in their normal use of technology. And but um, I'm I'm starting to see it less as a, a distraction, to be honest. At first, I was so worried, like, oh my God, you're not doing your work. But some of them, I think, actually do better when they have some music yeah. playing in their ear sometimes. And and this is something that I'm starting to ease up and and realizing it's not that I would say everybody just go and do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if it's working for you and you show me with your work that it's worked for you, then okay. And so this is something that I think is is you know can be a distraction. The chat room sometimes, if you have like a chat function in the notebook or something, and the kids like you know get into it, and that can be, <laughs> yeah, they don't have the etiquette as you mentioned earlier yeah. to <laughs> what did, to manage themselves. What grade were you teaching? These are mostly sophomores. Okay, so, so hopefully yeah. by like my time, sixth grade. Yeah, get them, get them ready. But yeah, that's I just general. There's there's more, more, I'm sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, I, I'm the fear of. The, the motivation's not going to be there. That you know the kind of the, the excitement of having technology if they get used to it because now I'm able to use it as a tantalizing like carry. You know, so you got to complete this in order to get onto the computer. So I still scaffold. I still do the old fashioned collecting research on paper and such. Mm -hmm. So, but and through my last assessment, and I haven't done as many as I should. Um, I don't know if the quality of writing of writing has improved. I mean, what they're doing is just copying and pasting, you know, research a whole sentence, and they just put put it in. So they, I haven't seen quality of writing improve just yet. Um, I haven't. I don't. Not sure if the gain of science knowledge has gained. I mean, technology standards definitely have gone higher. But again, because there's such a tremendous shift right now in our curriculum with the new Common Core standards and GSS standards, it's really hard to assess. And it's, it's not, I'm not sure if we can compare their science knowledge to previously. I mean, I think their skills definitely have gone up, but I don't know about their, uh, in, yeah, their content knowledge or their writing abilities, their math abilities. I mean, I'm sure the computer can generate that graph, but can they actually interpret the graph? Um, if I was to ask them to create a graph on paper, will they be able to label the axis and be able to uh, articulate what the trend is? Or you know, so some things I'm hesitant on. And I had this, this discussion as well with uh, science probes. Yesterday we were um, doing probes with um, temperature. Um, so you know, you were like, okay, well, it's kind of nice that they do learn how to read an actual thermometer. I mean, it's so it's too convenient. So, I mean, through discussion with the professor, it's like, hey, what is the skill you're trying to master? So sometimes I wonder what's age appropriate for middle school level. Like, I really believe they should, should still know how to use a ruler, how to cursive write sometimes, you know? So um, there's, but then, you know, the, the focus is on 
you know, writing or something. I don't know. I don't but know that's where you can put in choice, I think, because if a kid right. who has terrible handwriting can type on the computer, by all means, mm -hmm. type everything, because I don't right. want to read your chicken scratch. But that's you great. Can, you can do cursive on the touch screen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but they can't read it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like one big to, word. Like, differentiate in that moment though too, because you know those kids they have access to a computer, like or are mm -hmm. better, you know, typers, and, or they can just get that done, that work done. Yeah, and right. That's probably good. Like you're giving them that opportunity to like hear music yeah. too, and I, you know, I do that in my classroom as well. So I'm, you know, I don't. I think that's the. <clears throat> it's not so much that I say it's like a punishment or something, you know, their computer is always on their desk, right. always. Whether they're on it and using it, that's a different story based on what they're doing, but they should know when to use it and when and right. how, and, and I think by just giving them that choice this year to like, okay, well, if you need to be on this problem longer, go ahead, or if you need to go to this, you know, this assignment is, you know, on my agenda, my, that assignment's ending on my agenda right now, but if you need to keep going, you need to, you know, know that you right. need to pace yourself better, but here we go. You know, you now you have differentiation because you have extra time, and so I think that's I think that, that's the shift. I think that it's, it's hard because you yeah. want to be able to carry that paper home and mm -hmm. then check on everybody. And but I think that was the yeah. biggest thing is once I started like seeing all the thing the answers on the computer and like you know even today just on that form just you know, showing it to you it was just easier to see like okay well look, as a class right. I can vis physically do this whole question you know and things like that were kind of cool. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I hear a lot all now about how yeah. your use of technology for student voice and choice. So how about collaboration between students? Between two students? Uh, I Did think so. Know? Yeah, for the students. So how do you use yeah. adult people? Yeah, yeah so um, I think in my classroom, I think the students really like to work on projects together, both in the physical awesome. classroom and online. I mean, this yeah. is fun for them. They're socializing and having side conversations as they're learning. And so this is great. <laughs> and um, yeah, like things like shared PowerPoints or even shared like Word documents where you're writing different sections of a report or analyzing different information, uh, it's good for them. And they know how to do that. That was like the first thing that I thought would be tough that they got like immediately. That was like when they could do a joint PowerPoint presentation. I was like, okay, I guess, yeah, I'm gonna do a harder assignment next time. I thought, I thought this was gonna take me forever to teach you this, and you got it. So like that was easy, it was natural, yeah. and then that was you know pretty cool. So for me, I mean, um, besides the tablets, like I've always kind of used computers in a way. So um, my elective class, um, we, we take, the tablets unfortunately were inadequate for the design project. So we do a lot of technology, we compete in the uh, district tournament of technology, so we create a lot of videos. Uh, we do a lot of 3D printing as well. So, but through that, um, even the skills that they gain from those tablets are from you know collaborative work. Um, they're able to share their work. So, uh, in two weeks, we'll be competing in these live challenges. One of them is like creating a, a public service announcement. They have 30 minutes to create a sway. So they are learning to collaborate very quickly. They create a shared folder. They're gonna throw research and photos in there and videos, and then quickly create crank out a video in 20 minutes. So um, being able to collaborate that way and produce a video within 30 minutes um, is very powerful. So yeah, yeah but um, definitely, I mean, they're sharing files with me. So anytime they need a, a, a project to be printed, a 3D useful object or a car or a bridge, they know how to share the file with me. So then we're working through several programs, design programs, and. So they're doing like Photoshop, Illustrator, they're working on West Point engineering bridge design, so movie yeah. makers, so. And, yeah. and remind me, what's your grade? Um, seventh and eighth. Seventh. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it's just a tablet limitation, but I mean, they can totally do that. So I want to push them next year where they're creating that video. So we already, you know, for my science kids where we usually use the PLI um, tablets, they are using the camera to take pictures, but then I had them create videos of their worm racing down the, the desk. So I'm like, hey, publish onto YouTube, and then create that link, and then put it into your PowerPoint, so then kids can, you know, create a QR code, and then kids yeah. can like share that race, and they can present it to their parents at open house. So oh my yeah, That's so but yeah, we'd love to observe or come yeah. visit your class sometimes. Cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just um, I'm talking about timelines um, because my students have made a sway. They have done PowerPoints. The math assignment, I actually did a model. They did what we call now showdown, which was a paper pencil, and then they did the PowerPoint, and they were able to do that whole PowerPoint in about 40 minutes. So that was solving the problem, typing everything up, 
making all their models because um, they showed it in more than one way. The solution, fourth grade standard, is modeling. So you know that was really important that they showed that. And then um, about three fourths of the groups were able to actually make up a problem that was their extra credit. So when I think, you know, if my fourth graders are doing this now in about 40 minutes, you know, how much better are they going to be in fifth grade and sixth mm -hmm. grade and, you know, just collaborating totally. and working yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's, let's dig deep into uh, different groups uh, in terms of the students' access and agree to technology. So how would you describe, like, different groups' access and agree to technology? Yeah. Then our school site. Yeah. <clears throat> so our school site still has um, the the six original tablets that you got per teacher. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we have a couple of uh, carts with that are like for classroom uh, use, and they can check them out. So it's not a lot. So I my classroom is my classroom, and then my colleague's classroom was also in PLI. Like we're definitely like we have the most, so people are definitely buying for that technology a lot. It's in our so the student check out these. Um, yeah. So the teacher yeah. would check out like the cart and then bring that to their classroom, and then they would use the tablet for the day, and then that would go back into the computer lab and get charged okay. overnight, and then the teacher could use. So they can, they can use it within their class time. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Versus me, who just has their cart in their classroom all the time and can use them every day all day. Yeah. <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, our um, school, and I think this is a disadvantage, we have two carts, mm -hmm. but the teachers only get it for a 45 minute block of time. Two carts mm -hmm. for the whole school? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. We have two carts. Two, two, and 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 two carts plus mm -hmm. your cart? Yeah, and well, but like each, other PLI teachers. But, but then each class has How many six. Okay, How many so carts? About 30. Yeah, How many do yeah. six? So right. each That's class has much. six. So I gave all my six. Talk to five other teachers and you put yeah, them all in the Yeah, I don't have mine. That's what you used to. Yeah. You got to pull them together. Yeah, so, you better have yeah, them. Yeah, I don't have my, my six either. So my, I'm not, my, my six gets dispersed. So how they came up with their, um, because they had the two cards. So they have their six every day, but then there's the two cards. And so how, how they planned it was, okay, you'll have it for 45 minutes, and then mm -hmm. it gets moved to the next teacher, because we have a tech guy this year. And so he moves it. And my comment was, you can't even take an assessment in 45 minutes. No. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, that's all. That's the best that we can do. And so now one of the teachers is taking, uh, has a cart for an extended amount of time because the next teacher that gets the cart doesn't have as many students. So she can keep it. And then the tech guy only takes what the next teacher needs. So it happens to be my partner who is an MPLI <coughs> teacher. So very, very challenging because of not having a, um, technology, enough tablets mm -hmm. on the school site. Yeah. Well, even okay. Yeah, with testing. Oh, no, with no. testing. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, with I was going to say with testing, that's yeah. so hard for us because, again, we have these couple of carts. And so for SBAC testing, fifth graders are going to take their SBAC test almost three weeks before sixth grade will because of how we have to pass around mm -hmm. the tablets. So fifth grade teachers are not so happy because right after spring break, they have to SBAC test, whereas other grade levels get like extra weeks. So now we're uh, giving you know, more students more time and how fair is that too, because we're lacking in this technology that we all have to take this SBAC test on a tablet, but we're not gonna provide enough technology for them to do that test mm -hmm. well. That's kind of crazy to me. So that's or use it in a I think that's where the animosity comes from it. too, because those yeah. types of things come up, and I bet you they're going back home, and those are dinner conversations. You know, mm -hmm. like can you believe that this is happening? You know, this teacher has all these tablets, and like we're forced to mm -hmm. disperse all of our other tablets. And that's crazy. Whenever we test, we test, and whenever you get the t cart, you get the cart, and you know you can put all of your tablets together but what if i want to do the same one lesson yeah, that's true. tomorrow you can't do that you have to do the lesson which means that i have to wait or do something different for that day so that we can all be together mm -hmm. so that doesn't really work <clears throat> so I, i'm not going to address so much the logistics because we have a lot of tablets and cards uh -huh. we pull them together as well but i'm going to address the issue about equity um, definitely i think 
um, it allows some kids who need um, who are eight, who can't write to type, but I do have some special ed kids who can't even mm -hmm. type, so it doesn't. I still have to administer the thing, uh, the test orally. Um, but I don't think computers necessarily necessarily is a band aid for everything because it turns out that computers, mm -hmm. some some of the special ed or the English learners, they actually need more time on the tablets. And sometimes if you're trying to get everyone on the same thing, mm -hmm. they you know it's not fair to say like just because I have a computer, they'll be able to complete that assignment within that same amount of time. So there's been some differentiating there. But I will have to say that having that computer and addressing equity is that they're able to check their grades a lot more frequently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're able to email their teachers with yeah. about like, how do I make up this work? And this yeah. is something that these students previously did not have access to because mm -hmm. they didn't have internet, they didn't mm -hmm. have computer time, and we try to rush them out of class, you know, school out of, you know, as soon as the bell rings. So, uh, and the only time they get to use the computer is when they're taking the test. So I think we talked about this last time. So the only time they do is take the test. So uh, by giving them this tool to communicate with their uh, teachers and uh, checking their grades, I think will be really valuable in their academic and their performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then the other thing for access to technology, the, if you're doing I mean, in high school, almost everybody has a phone, and with the like Office 365 app, they can get to their work mm -hmm. anywhere on the bus ride home, or you know, at home on, off of Wi-Fi, or stopping at dinner wherever. I mean, and so you don't necessarily have to have a computer at home to still make up work or finish a homework assignment. And I mean, that's kind of a cool extension, I think, that I'm you know starting to get into a little bit more, but. Um, yeah, I mean, they're able to, to get to their assignments yeah. and or turn in all like these different, how you see all these different we, weird hours that kids are turning in assignments, like, oh, yeah. why didn't you go to sleep? Yeah. And they're like, you should be in bed right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do that too, I'll get wow. email, like, wow. be like, watching TV and I'll get an email from a student and just like, wow, sixth grade, like, the 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Like, what was I doing, 9 p.m.? <laughs> 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 yeah, like, all right, yeah. Yeah. that's fine. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's good. It's good to have that choice, right? You're yeah. going to be one yeah. of those kids that, I mean, maybe 9 o'clock is the quietest time in that child's home yeah. to get work done, which is a lot of my students that tell me that. Like, there is no way that I'm going to get this done before 9 stop telling me to go to sleep. I went to sleep at 6, and I woke up at 8 so that I could get my work done at 9 because my family is bothersome until 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. So just that alone is so cool. Because then they're getting on their apps and they're, can I install it on my my computer? You know, yes, you can install it on your computer for free. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, President. I, you know, it's Microsoft or whatever, the whole thing. So it's cool for them to be able to, like, that's another way to differentiate work, too. I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my last question seemed to be out of place because you guys enjoy it so much. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm kidding. Uh, so what, what are some, uh, I hear the access and equity issues, what are some other uh, challenges or struggles that you have technology-wise at your site? I'm just going to speak on my site. It's one yeah. of the oldest sites in the <laughs> district. And so Wi-Fi and the infrastructure and cement buildings and mm -hmm. bad connection is just oh, a huge yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we always work with it, but the kids sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even yeah. testing with SBAC last year, that little light had to be green for them to like submit their test. And yeah. that's like a whole layer of anxiety for students that they should not have. No. Ever. No. Like, I'm already nervous about finishing this test, exactly. and now I have to wait for this little light to turn green? Let me exactly. go ahead and be completely anxious for 40 seconds yeah. while this light turns green, and let me change my answer because now I've second-guessed myself, and now I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, all of that can happen with just that little bit of issue. I think that's mm -hmm. super important. Um, same thing, our school, um, it, it has major issues on one side of the campus, not the other. And so um, connections are just um, horrible. Now, <laughs> the PLI, they've come in, I'm sure, uh, maybe they came into your room and tried to do a booster so that we have it. Okay. But then once again, the other classrooms don't have it. So it's like, were you kicked off? No, I wasn't kicked off. Uh, we were kicked off. Um, so that is um, a stressor. And then sometimes um, our new wonders, um, it, it their site is is messed up. Mm -hmm. So it's got glitches in it. So um, we were trying to get um, books downloaded. Um, I do small group reading. And so 
they if they can listen to the book um, on it and if they're like it's not loading, it's not loading, it's so not loading. Pages are different. Yeah. yeah. Like you'll be reading and like you'll click the next page and it'll be porn. And then it's right. Page. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's next? Now so, I have to get that one paper for like a copy of a page for that one book. Okay. And then you asked, you know, it, as an individual for me, I'm old. Okay. Oh, I dye my hair. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I have 16 uh, year olds dyeing their hair. Don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different um, colors. But you know, all of this technology is, um, you know, I want to know it all, yeah. and I don't know it all, and I want to yeah. be moving on. Mm -hmm. um, I want, you know, I I go to go to our PLIs, and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I need to go out three times because I didn't get what I needed, because either my brain's not, you know, firing as quickly as it needs to, whatever. So. Um, that is my biggest challenge, and, and for my second grade partner, she has run into the same things, and she's still fairly young. So she'll say, "Gosh, you know, I went I went to this website, and and I thought, oh, this is going to be fabulous, and then I got there, and there was this glitch and that glitch, and oh, then my kids couldn't do this, and and because we're we're not there's not enough of us on the school site that oh, I tried it, this worked. It's like the kids. Yeah. We don't we don't have that resource, and so. I think that's what the PLI program is trying to to solve. Your site, yeah. where you when you collect all the um, teachers and share experience, mm -hmm. you, you can collect them and group and share experience. What works, what doesn't work, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I love. Okay, so um, I'm just lucky to have the tablets. We have some great science teachers. We actually have the teacher of the year at our site, mm -hmm. and so I. Can't, if she gets tablets, I'm just gonna jump up in the air because I'm sh showing her tools and she's like, that's great. And <laughs> she can't do it. So mm -hmm. there's no animosity, she's a great teacher. But um, I think just having m some more tablets to build a community yeah. would be great. Because it does, three, three people on the site or two people on site, that's like a pair, that's not a group mm -hmm. that's solving the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially for different grade levels, different subjects, and so I, my dream would be a cohesive science department where we have upper division classes where students are engaged in inquiry. They have, we have the veneer software. We have Lab Logger Pro, oh, Lab yeah. Quests, and so I think we could even help other sites. Once we have a group, then we can share with other sites mm -hmm. more easily because mm -hmm. our our lessons and our units are mm -hmm. well thought out and how technology is integrated, then we can share with other sites. This is how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. If they have like teachers who are at different grade levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sorry for phase. Yeah, three. very, very similar for me. It's uh, I think my biggest challenge is like getting creative and designing mm -hmm. lessons. Mm -hmm. And when I was first beginning teaching, I would go next door and say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm gonna try that, and mm -hmm. I, I can't really do that because there's no so few them. people using online-based learning and yeah, digital tools, and and so yeah, if we can yeah ramp up the numbers that are participating in this, you're gonna generate a lot more creativity and new ways to teach. Mm -hmm. That it's not just I'm dependent on what I can find on my you know. Yeah. Ten minute web search on what I need something for tomorrow. You know, like I'm not going to come up with something good that way. And yeah. next year it'll be better. But um, if I can talk to somebody for real about like what's a good idea, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, going to be the huge step for me. Yeah, and I was going to talk into kind of what phase one was for me. So my other teachers, we we felt like we went through a lot of the problems, and we know how to not do it a million ways. Like Edison did it a thousand times to make one light bulb. So I feel like talking to other science teachers, I'm, I'm gonna be able to easily say, these are the resources that we've used with this initiative that work, mm -hmm. and they're not jumping and mm -hmm. making all the wrong turns. Mm -hmm. And so phase two is going to be awesome. I can tell you that at our site right now, you give us more tablets, we are ready to go. Because yeah, we absolutely. have already hurdled, turned, mm -hmm. stumbled, mm -hmm. gotten up, <laughs> the kids have been there along the way, so I'm just excited for that. If I may comment on the logistics, 
Um, so for the past few years, my site, we've been using Google Classroom, like Google's uh, yeah. platform. So uh, we've been attending the Google Apps for Education conferences. So we know that system very well. We have our own you know, school domain. So, but this year I wanted to try out the Microsoft platform. So that's been very difficult because I know it's all new. Uh, Microsoft Classroom, I attempted and then some of the three, Office 365. And for me, honestly, it's been kind of uh, clumsy, but then you know, I kind of looked at it last month um, through the PLI team, mm -hmm. and I realized that it's much better. But there are still some gaps for me to fully commit to Microsoft still. Um, one of them is you know, so many of the apps are so neatly aligned with Google. So you know, things like prism.scholars.lab, you know, some of the uh, Kazena. So that, that keeps me from fully committing to Microsoft. Um, also, um, not being able to give immediate feedback to my students. You have to wait until the students submit their work in order to give them feedback. And I can't let three days lapse until my students give me back their file. So um, by having a live file constantly, yeah. like Google, that is just a lot more user-friendly for a teacher. So um, until they sort that out and uh, for me to figure out how to roll out you know, things like, um, yeah, to um, interact better, I think. Microsoft has been kind of more difficult, but I, I'm gonna try it again next year and try out those digital notebooks like Blue Chad. So um, but that's kind of my thing. So cool. Wow, you guys are just amazing. I'm truly impressed. Thank you so much for bringing all the great stories to the table and thanks for sharing your passions and your great insights. And thank you for making all the difference in the kids' life. So can we uh, follow up with you guys if we have question and sure, stuff. Sure, yeah? sure. All right. Thank you so much once again. All right. Have to go to the finishing yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I know. Yeah.